which chat war dog message over welcome back guys to total war wednesday which sounds different but it's exactly the same as three kingdoms thursday i see david is in the chat with five bits for the war fund thank you very much david i see ryan's in the chat as well making threats as usual and doomsday's in the chat too so that's most of the people that are already sponsoring officers in this Guys, don't forget, if you are watching this after the fact, if you're lurking right now, if you just joined, that we are doing sponsor an officer on this, in which you can select one of the officers in our cadre of talented individuals, and you can guide their career. You choose their skills when they level up, you try and get them into the positions you want them to be in, and you can influence the direction that the faction goes as well when decisions need to be made, and I'm not too sure where we're at sarah's aware that we're going live ryan she'll be here when she gets here and convict is in the chat as well welcome to the stream convict how's everybody's wednesday going i don't know about you guys but it's been two weeks since we managed to do some total war some three kingdoms and i am hype as fuck so let's just get straight into it we'll do a quick recap of where we're at we're on Spring 201, which is turn 54 of the campaign. We currently own the Dark Green Territory up here. We are at war with Gongsun Zan and uh, Yuan Shao. Gongsun Zan has territory here to the south of us. He has territory here, and he's probably got most of this territory up here. And Yuan Shao is south of this Gongsun Zan settlement down this kind of direction. He has also apparently got... Luoyang's trade port down there. So we're at war with those two. We've just dealt a devastating blow to Gongsun Zan's army led by Zhao Yun and executed Zhao Yun as a result. Sarah's in the chat as well. Some person decided to take care of their health and go to a doctor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yes, Zhao Yun just executed on the end of the last stream. Yue Jin still in charge of that army. Um, we are poised to potentially take advantage and uh, finish him off. So let's just double check. We've got Jung Jung, which is of course myself, because she's the faction, faction leader. We've got Lu Jung in her army as well, uh, sponsored by Sarah. We've got Song Chen uh, as the lieutenant in the army, sponsored by David. We've got Yin Li, who I believe is being sponsored by Rill. Uh, Chu Gong being sponsored by Ryan, and then we have Shun Yu, Ju Jun, and Shu Rao, who are all chilling at court. So those are our current officers. Ju Jun, of course, is proving to be a little bit of a problem with his satisfaction. And we are on the uh, war front right now. Mm, money wise, we I can't remember what we were going to do with finances and building to be perfectly honest but i typically save at the end of a turn so this turn must be finished so let's hit enter and proceed yobe wants military access if we give him three food for the next 10 turns of course we get military access to him too it's not a one-way street Oh, right, I'm still on the default uh, thingy. Hold up a sec. There you go. Thank you for pointing that out, David. Uh, I don't use uh, different setups for many games, so I sometimes forget. How much food do we have? It's a good question. We make eight food per turn. Ryan asks, do we want to be friends with him? Uh, he's not currently got any allies. Or, oh no, he does. He's allied with Cao Cao and Liu Dai, who are all to the south. He's trading with Gongsun Zan. So, I don't know. He does share this uh, border with us. Wait, he's right here. And he's probably got a whole bunch of territory down this way as well, because that's where he starts. It's debatable whether it would mean that we'd be friends. He actually does appear to like us quite a lot. He's friendly towards us. Mm. 
not happy about some of our executions in the war. I don't know, what does the council think? Never trust Liu Bei. <laughs> Liu Zhong clearly uh, has a, an issue with Liu Bei. He will stab you in the back. He's benevolent though. He'll stab you benevolent, benev bleh bleh, benevolently in the back. There you go. I know this from my past life as her yi. <laughs> okay, well, Lu Jung's made her position quite clear. I don't know where we're at with the rest of the council. Remember, guys, if you are trying to put some council opinion forward, but it's going to be a longer one, just put three dots and I'll wait until you've said what you're going to say. He's at war with people. We have peace with I'll probably say no all right well that's two no's little diplomacies lead to positive relations if you want to be on good terms with him go for it okay so Chu Gong is advising we potentially go for it Lu Jung and Song Chen are not and Sarah's put the three dots so we're gonna wait on whatever she's saying as well I'd rather he give us money for that food Mm, it's a solid argument. I don't think he would. We can have a try. How much is a thousand copper worth to him? Um, More or less the same, actually. So, yeah, we could get a thousand copper off of him. Because he is desperate for food. He's in minus one. Oh. Song Chen says let's do it. We always need monies. That is true. Money, money, money. Sounds like Lu Jung's on board. Chu Gong's on board. Deal done. Yu Jin running away to uh, on ping. Han Fu has been destroyed. Now Liu Bei has two territories on our eastern border. Brilliant versus incompetent. Once again, your harmonious afternoon is disturbed by the clamor of disagreement. This is impossible, one cries. I cannot work with this idiot. Bring me a monkey. That would at least be entertaining. You are an oaf as well as rude, snaps the second. You only know I am a fool because you are a fool too. Their argument rages on. So it appears that uh, Shu Rao and Shun Yu are having a, s having a fight. Uh, I, we're going to side with Shun Yu because... I love Shun Yu, and also Shu Rao is incompetent, so we want... Uh, you fired the incompetent off with a dismissive gesture. Anything that impedes harmony is chaos and therefore unwanted. That doesn't sound very Jung Jung, to be honest, but sure. We gained a wooden ox. Okie doke. Right, um, we're just going to pursue. <laughs> I know that Sarah's agenda for Gong Zan is to turn him into a tributary, but I think we all agreed we were going to take An Ping first. Um, we're at 4,800. It may well be worth upgrading Yanmen to a town for an extra build slot for 1,500. I think we're going to do that doesn't spend too much of our money so uh, Jujun still having issues with his loyalty um, he's at four if he hits zero he will leave I think we yeah we have put him on an assignment so hopefully that will turn his lack of purpose um, around and get rid of that minus eight but we'll see. 
Uh, I think that's going to be the end of the turn. Gongsun Zan wants peace and is willing to pay us 770 copper per turn for 10 turns. But uh, I think we already know what our terms for him are. And I'm, you cannot demand he becomes a tributary and gives you something else. So we're going to have to refuse until we've captured An Ping. Doomsday, I will show you who's available for sponsoring on this next turn. I believe we've got three officers available right now. Shun Yu has just gained the Tranquil trait, so no time like the present. Uh, nope, 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 and nope. So it's these bottom three. Uh, it's Shun Yu, who is a 38-year-old strategist, level 2. Uh, a hegemon's aide is his personality or his background. I don't know what to call this. I think background's probably the best. Um, he is dutiful, tranquil, understanding, bright, brilliant, and distinguished. Uh, he's also a character who was quite important early on in the novel itself. Um, he's an advisor to uh, both Yuan Shao and Cao Cao. Uh, then we have Ju Jun, who is a level 4. Shun Yu is also a legendary character. Ju Jun, who is also a legendary character, level 4 vanguard, inspector background, who is greedy, feared, and arrogant, uh, but is probably going to leave within a couple of turns, because his, uh, his negativity is not turning around. How did we go from 4 to 2, but we lost a minus 2? That doesn't make any sense. So I would advise against picking him for the time being, because he might not stay. And the other one is Shu Rao, who is a level 1 strategist. She's 21. Uh, Ju Jun is 30, just in case you were curious. She has a manipulator background. She's incompetent, disloyal, and arrogant. She's not legendary. Those are the three current characters available for sponsoring. We may end up recruiting other characters, to be fair. We could actually have a look, because we've got quite a bit. Um, it's probably not worth recruiting any level 4s, because they'll give us the same issues as uh, Ju Jun would. We've got Lee Tong, 33-year-old, level 2 vanguard. Oh, used to fight for Gongs and Zan, so that might not be too smart of a plan. You heard you... 60 years old, probably not a good idea either. <sighs> Zhang Yan is in the recruitment pool! Guys! Alright, we need a council decision on whether we're going to recruit Zhang Yan. Don't worry about him being a spy. Well, actually, you might have a small concern about him being a spy, because apparently he's very briefly served Liu Biao after his faction was destroyed. He's 49 years old. He's level 4 as well, so he could be another problem character. Uh, he's careless, stubborn, greedy, and scarred. Yeah, we might struggle to keep him, to be perfectly honest. What's so special about Zhang Yan, convict? Uh, Zhang Yan is a unique character, basically. That's the only thing that's really special about him. He's one of the starting faction leaders that we defeated in, um, I think, in day one we defeated him. We start next to him. Cal saying, do it. Ryan thinks we've got enough problems. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he'd stay because he's a level four, unfortunately. Can we see his... No, not really. Don't think he's worth it right now. We have two champions anyways. We do have enough problems. Oh, shit. Fine. We'll miss out on him. Good lord. 
We gained an Overlord Ancillary as well. Um, I think, Doomsday, did you call that you wanted to sponsor someone? You want to sponsor Shun Yu? We can do that. If that's what you want. Don't worry about if you if you pick somebody and you decide that they're shit or you don't like them or their career's not going anywhere. You can switch your sponsor at any time. The only stipulation is that you can only actually sponsor one person at a time. So if you switch from Shunyu to somebody else, that's cool. You can do that whenever you want, but then you stop getting to make decisions as or for Shunyu. Let's look at getting on ping. So we've got Eugene with Xia Jiao. There's not much chance of them winning. I am very tempted to starve them out, let them take a turn of attrition and then try and demand some surrender rather than just fighting for no reason. It's not, not going anywhere, looks at the rice. Hmm. They currently have about a hundred more men than we do, but their units are weak, their officers are weak and... Starve them. Alright, let's starve them out then. Cool. Right. Um, city building. Um, what, what have we got in Zhongshan? Right, that's this one, isn't it? Um, so we're going to have to Okay, we have a land registry office in Zhongshan, which we could upgrade to irrigated farms. Which, um... Nah, it would take more than half of our money, and it really wouldn't provide a big boost. She, her fishing port on the other side. That gives us food, but it costs us upkeep, so I'm not going to do that. It's not worth it. We'll proceed. They are going to sally out. So now we've got a fight. Might be, I don't know. Let me have a look at the, the map view. It's basically going to be a field battle. So we want to win this, and we did make a pledge to try to stop delegating. It's not a straightforward delegate win, so I think I am going to fight it. So Zheng Zhang, Lu Zheng and Song Chen's forces going to battle against Yue Jin. Who the fuck are you talking to? That's interesting. Deploy the battle wafter. Yeah. Battle wafter! Wafty, wafty, wafty. Dave! Welcome to the stream, buddy! Talking to himself, maybe. Could be, but uh, I think it was supposed to be directed at one of us. How's your Wednesday going, Dave?
Okie do, here we go. So, they are going to get some reinforcements, which means that their weakened army is probably going to start on this hill, move backwards, and then push forwards. So we'll just make to position ourselves in this uh, gap in the trees. I'm going to go... We will have plenty of time to position, like, once the battle starts, so... We're just going to build the formation that we're going to use, and then we'll proceed from there. So we're going to go Sabre Militia Centre, flanked by the two Axe Bands. Our archers, of course, all seven units of them. Since we've got one we need to get rid of in Jung Zhang's retinue, we'll form the second line. Spear Guards will form flank cover. And our G militia that we really need to get rid of at some point as well will just be held in reserve along with the hidden axes. Right. Jung Jong. Yeah, she doesn't buff her allies. Lu Jung has a buff, but it's not passive. And Song Chen also has an active buff. So we'll just put the officers. Song Chen apparently refusing to stand where he's supposed to. And remember guys, if you're controlling one of the officers in the battle, you can also give me generalized instructions for what you want them to do in, this, in the battles. So for example, if you want to charge forth and go on a suicide mission, that's completely up to you. If you want to, you know, refuse to have your officer comply. When the army's in like a single formation like this, I'm probably not going to say that you can pull your own retinue out. But if, for example, you get given a small bunch of troops to command separately, it's up to you whether they attack or not, even if the plan is for them to attack. More spear guard needed, says Doomsday. I don't know. It's so far this army's done alright for us. Thinking about hopping on OC, Dave? Yeah. So we're going to move ourselves down into the valley. Whilst we've got some movement and stuff going on and uh, there's not a lot to see on the screen, we'll do a little bit of a... cinematic shot of our guys coming over the hill. And I shall inform you guys about what the plan is for further Three Kingdoms Jung Jung days. Um, we're no longer doing Three Kingdoms Thursdays because it's not good for Ryan because his work's patterns have changed and he now works when I would stream on a Thursday. So Three Kingdoms Thursdays will become Total War Wednesdays. And we also discussed last week the possibility of moving it to two days a week. If that is going to be the case, the second day will likely be Mondays as well. Unfortunately, it won't have a cool name because <laughs> I can't think of one. But uh, yeah, so it's definitely going to be every Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m. GMT start time for two to three hours. No longer Thursday. Um... And it may at some point start being a Monday. What I do need to say though is that there's probably not going to be any streams during the week next week. Because I'm supposed to be moving down south. Um, I'm supposed to sign my new lease on Thursday next week. And the people that I are moving out of my room are moving out on Wednesday next week. Uh, which means that I'm going to be kind of moving in during next week. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm leaving. Um, the plan is not set in stone right now. It's possible that I'll be um, leaving at some point this weekend and um, my folks will be driving my stuff down south after that, the weekend after. 
So I'm not sure when. There will definitely be a stream tomorrow. Um, and I don't stream on Fridays. But Saturday and Sunday this weekend are in question. Uh, Monday also in question next week. And Wednesday, Thursday next week are almost certainly going to be no stream days. And then Saturday, Sunday, the next Saturday, Sunday are also possibly going to be affected. But hopefully after that I will be uh, in place more war mondays i <laughs> love it we'll do that total war wednesdays and more war mondays so yeah um the next unfortunately the next 3k stream is highly likely to be gonna gonna be another two weeks unfortunately um and then there will be a disruption at the end of october when i go on holiday but after that hopefully i'm i'm hoping that it will be pretty steady except for like holiday season so, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be coming home for Christmas, um, but I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, the disruptions will be minimal. This has been coming for a while. Um, you know, I, the, the plans were made that I was going to be moving down south uh, a significant period of time ago, a couple of months even. Um, unfortunately ironing out the details of it has proved a lot harder because i have to wait until certain people have moved out of where i'm trying to move in and they're also trying to wait for the people to move out of the place they're moving into so yeah it's not been ideal i still don't know exactly what the plan is but i do know that my landlord wants to sign the contract on the 10th which is next thursday so i have to be there for the 10th which kind of means I need to be there on at least the 9th, because otherwise it'd be kind of hard to do. Um, which, almost certainly, because I'm not going to be moved in when I sign that contract, but I am going to be down there, I'm not going to have my PC with me. So, it's just not going to be doable, unfortunately. I will let you guys know on the Discord, as soon as I'm sure what the uh, plan is when there will be streams and when there won't be streams. I'm hoping in the next 24 hours to lock down my plan for the next week or two. And uh, yeah, if you're not in the Discord and you do, uh, you are interested in keeping up with things and, you know, hello. Xia Jiao wants to duel Jung Zhang. Are you mental? What's wrong with you? You're going to lose that fight. You do know that, right? I, th I feel like I'm missing something, like why would he challenge for that, but we're going to do it. Uh, yes, exclamation mark Discord guys, if you want an invite to my Discord and you don't already have one, uh, and you want to keep up with things. Oh wow, he actually got the first blow. Thank you very much honey. I doubt this will be a long duel. Well, he's dead as shit. Send Song Chen down to the right flank. Lu Jung's going to hold the flank she's on. We're going to throw the hidden axes forward into the center of the fray. And we're going to move the G militia to the right flank. Oh, did you both do it? I thought Sarah had just done it twice somehow. So Jung Jung is taking on a whole unit right now. Who I think took umbrage to uh, her killing... What's his face? Don't get back on the horse, you lunatic. They've got big sticks. Fight them. 
Starting to break. What about the new Troy Total War game? Um, I haven't seen a lot of it, Convict. Uh, it looks decent. Um, settings interesting. I like the art style. It visually, like Creative Assembly, are just doing a fantastic job recently. Uh, but yeah, I don't know too much about it. I haven't looked too much at it. For me, it'd be a, it's more of a question of like waiting until it's out and trying it. Unmount me and send me into their spears. Okay. I think the uh, term is dismount you. Unmount you sounds a lot like I'm on top of you. And that is absolutely not the situation. <laughs> There we go, Song Chen's charging in with his dual gen. Oops, sorry. Oh, he is born in face. Wow. What's Jung Jung doing? She's still doing all right. Whoa. Keep control of your camera, mate. in their faces there they go I think you just killed one of our men apparently Tong Chen's so flipping dangerous he doesn't even can't distinguish green from white How can we be sure of that without a webcam? How can you be sure of what without a webcam? I'm confused. Tidy victory. You be oh right, okay. Well that ain't happening. That's not what this channel's for. Uh, CA have just released a new patch today which we're not using it's a, an opt-in patch uh, 1.3.0 and it gives four characters that have previously been like NPC characters a unique um, look uh, they're all really cool characters uh, if I remember correctly it is Pang Tong which if you're familiar with the novel you'll know him or as the shoe officer who defects to Wei and convinces Cao Cao to chain his boats together. Uh, if you are not familiar with the novel, you probably won't know him because I haven't even seen him in this game. Uh, but the other three are Huang Gai, which is one of Sun Jen's starting officers uh, and a, a Sun family loyalist for a long, long time from the early days. Uh, Jia Xu, who is one of uh, Dong Zhuo's advisors and I believe his son-in-law, uh, one of his many sons-in-law, uh, who was basically Dong Zhuo's main advisor uh, in the novel. And then the last one that I'm really excited about is Guo Jia, which was one of Cao Cao's early advisors, who died very, very young. Um, well, I say very, very, I think he was in late 20s, early 30s. He died as a result of exposure to heat while on campaign. But he was an exceptional strategist. And he's now got a unique look as well. They have also in the new patch... Um, what do we want reckon here, guys? They have also in the new patch basically redesigned the commander type. Um, now the commander type can unlock the bottom two tiers of every single type of troop. So as you will know if you've been here previously, um, everybody can unlock like one of each type of troop, the militia type. But only sentinels can recruit melee infantry like all of them only strategists can recruit all the missile troops only champions can recruit all the spear troops and vanguard shock cav um, commander melee cav as 
it was. Now, because CA have kind of recognized that commanders were basically like an unused class, right? Most armies tend to be a vanguard, a champion, a strategist, and occasionally somebody will throw a sentinel in instead of a vanguard or a champion. But most people didn't use commanders. Uh, David is saying replenish. It's probably not a bad shout. Ryan is saying replenish as well. So yeah, most people didn't tend to use um, vanguards. That's not vanguards, commanders. So they've now made it so that the commanders can unlock the bottom two tiers of every single colour. And can also unlock formations for basically everyone. Like they are now the, for the main formation person as opposed to the strategist because the strategist kind of useful in that they have missile troops as well yuen xiao wants to sign peace with us he will give us 1200 copper now and basically an additional 1000 copper over 10 turns no oh, wait is he's no he's asking that we pay him okay no fuck that yuen xiao can suck a note exactly so yeah um, commander's going to be much more cool and there's these four new officers unfortunately it doesn't appear that that patch works with a previously running campaign so we're not going to be doing it with the jung jung campaign but i will be opting into that uh with uh once we finish this and we start the next campaign whenever we finish this burst the dam the autumn rains have come and the rivers bloat with the fullness of the season one of your generals suggests that we use this to our advantage by bursting a nearby dam. The floodwaters will overwhelm an enemy village, but may surge onto our own lands too. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to do this. I think ordinarily Jung Jung would probably be um, pretty open to doing this. But we've practically won the siege anyway, so it just seems like it's overkill. So we're not going to do that. To inflict our war on innocent civilians is unconscionable. You could not do it. Would not do it. I don't think that's exactly why she didn't do it, to be fair. Alright. So now we can attack and we will be delegating this one because it's low casualties anyway. They've only got 900 men. Although we could demand their surrender and they will probably do it. They did do it. So, on ping, has anybody got in opinions on what we're doing with the settlement? And indeed, what we're going to do with... Uh, Gongsunzan, are we going to now make him a tributary or are we going to go take his settlement to the north? David saying loot and occupy. Doomsday is saying occupy. Anybody else? Loot and Occupy from Sarah. That's both of the officers in the army going for that. So we're going to say that maybe Jung Jung's orders were steal a couple of bits and occupy and then spurred on by the captain and the lieutenant. They basically ransacked it. Right. We now have revealed Yuen Shao in Yu. He's got the farmland and the city. I was hoping that we'd capture um, Yue Jin, but we didn't. So now we can go to Gongsun Zan. And potentially try and make him a tributary. We receive 35% of their regular tax income from their commanderies, plus trade, up to 8,000 copper. He'd go for it. So I already know that Lu Jung is about to scream, make him a tributary. But what does everybody else think? He's got more than that one settlement, just in case anybody's wondering. 
In fact, judging by this orange borderline, he probably owns at least that settlement and that settlement. And given that he starts with these settlements, he's probably got them too and most of this top corner, I'd imagine. Song Chen trusts Lu Jung's decision. Lu Jung has dressed a cat up as a policeman. I think we are doing this, are we not? We're doing it. Okay. We now have a tributary. And now we're making 3,300 copper a turn. Okie do. Uh, on ping, we might as well repair. Right. I reckon we need to uh, finalize the retinues down here while we're at this kind of stopping point. So number one is that uh, Jung Jung's archer militia are going to be going, I think, because they kind of have to. So let's swap that. And we shall claim... You know what? I'm going to claim a, a unit of Fists of the Bandit Queen. I also think this G Militia unit needs to go. At present, we have no Cav in this army. Do we think we would benefit from a single unit of Cavalry? We don't need Sai on Gong Sun Zan's land because we just uh, we just made peace with him. And in answer to your previous question, No Dai isn't his capital. That symbol means he's got an administrator for that uh, for that commandery. Yeah, second army is on the way after we've finalised the first. I think Ryan. What do we think about getting a single unit of Cav in Jung Jiang's retinue, guys? Because I kind of wanted to keep the hidden axes because they're high level and they're good units. She, I want her to have a fist to the Bandit Queen. She needs the two spear guards for the flank. These guys, well, Jung, uh, Lu Jung needs to have missile units, and Song Chen has pretty much the rest of the front line. Cav does offer immense flexibility, but Doomsday, whilst he's not completely right, or Shun Yu rather, uh. It's, for me, if you only have one unit of cav, it's more about, you know, disrupting the enemy's flanks once the infantry fight starts and or chasing down certain routing enemies that you want to catch. Um, they're not so much, you know, if you've got two units of cav, you can perform a proper flank attack. If you've got four units of cav, you can really envelop the enemy. One unit of cav is more like... You know, it's handy to have because in some cases they can be used as a scout force as well if you're on a battlefield where you don't know where the enemy are. Um, they can be used to mop up certain units or at the very least they can get round the enemy flank quicker and disrupt the, like, morale shock the enemy. What's the champion unit next to spear guards? Uh, that is heavy spear guards, which arguably we might want to upgrade the spear guards that we've got. But we definitely don't need three units of those. There doesn't seem to be very much consensus on cav versus no cav here, though. Personally, I'm thinking if we get cav, we get melee cav. Because they come with shields, so they've got a bit more archer defense. Their charge shock isn't as much, but they're a bit, bit sturdier. You can also put them in positions where the enemy has to leave units out of a fight to protect against the cav. Exactly, Ryan, yeah. So Chu Gong's all for some cav. I feel like we're rich enough to afford some horses. I'm going to do it. I'm not seeing any objections. Right, the other thing we need to look at sorting out here is... Really? Where's the rest of them? Me? 
Maybe we haven't unlocked archers from the tech tree. We have not. They are actually that technology, that reform. So... Uh, oh, we also need to upgrade these to heavy spear guard, don't we? Is there any downside? What is that? Morale. They would have less morale. That might be because they'll be coming in as a lower rank. They have less melee evasion. They're slower. So yeah, basically heavy spear guards, decent cavalry, better missile defense, slightly slower, and not as good, not as good at evading melee attacks. Like they're not super bad at it compared to spear guards, but which, when you're carrying around what looks like the bottom of a boat, I can imagine you would be a bit slower. I think for the time being I'm going to leave that. This army seems to be working pretty well for us, even though some of it is militia and we will want to upgrade it. Um, changing out those two units was really the main thing. And I think, to be honest, we want to be looking at maybe fielding a second army of some description. Which, especially if we're going to push into Yuan Shao down this way, that's going to leave our sort of uh, home base in the mountains very, very unprotected. So, Council, we have a decision to make. We need to adopt or elect someone to command a second army, which may not be a full army straight away, but they're still going to be getting made general of whatever it is. So who's it going to be? These are the characters we've got. Of, I mean, it's probably not going to be Jung Jung, because she's going to stay in command of the main force. But other than that, it could really be anyone. What is everyone's opinion on who should command the second army? Let's get some opinions on the go. Or some feedback or something. Who you guys think should be doing it? David's got something on the way. Doomsday is just going to sit back and watch an argument ensue. <laughs> okay. Ryan's saying David's character would be ideal with battle experience, but that depends on him being prepared to leave the main army. Well, let's have a quick overview of Tong Chen as a character. He's currently the lieutenant in the army that he's in. He's 35 years old. He's level 3. He has got significant military experience. Sarah, I'll break off and take the second army, honoured sister. As much as it joys me to stand by your side, I believe I can be of better use to our cause this way. Interesting. So, I don't know if Sarah's roleplay in that anything to do with the fact that... Uh, Lu Jung and Jung Jung no longer harmonize. They still like each other. They're still old swan, but they no longer harmonize. I don't know if that's informing Sarah's decision there, but that's very interesting. And I think, to be honest, definitely, yeah. Um, given that, uh, you know, they are sisters 
they do like each other, but Jung Jang also from a kind of disharmony position is the kind of like glad of the opportunity to get rid of Lu Jung without getting rid of her, just like to send her somewhere else so she's not bothering her. I think we're going to go with this. We're going to let Lu Jung command the new army. So we're going to recall the selected retinue. Yes, it's just I didn't know who I'd selected. Right, which bumps Song Chen up to captain in Jung Jang's force. We cannot redeploy Lu Jung this turn, but it does leave a lieutenant gap in Jung Jang's army. Shit, that would take away from the harmonizing of myself and Lu Jung. It does. But now we need to decide who the lieutenant in the main army is going to be, guys. Obviously not Lu Jung, not Song Chen, because he's the captain. So of the people who've previously not fought at all, who do we want to put in Jung Jang's army? Now, just for Harmony's sake, I will have a look at who harmonizes, but that shouldn't be the only factor. Chu Gong harmonizes with both Jung Jang and uh, Song Chen. Yin Li harmonizes with Jung Jang, but not with Song Chen. Shun Yu harmonizes with Song Chen, but not Jung Jung. Ju Jun would harmonize with Jung Jung, but not Song Chen. And Shu Rao would harmonize with Song Chen, but not Jung Jung. Waiting for swords to be drawn and fights to occur. So Song Chen is saying Chu Gong. Chu Gong's screaming from his rice fields. And I think it is mm, it's going to really imbalance the unit makeup of the army because we've now got no missile units so we're going to have to find a way to address that yeah however i think since song chen is recommending it and both song chen and jung jung like him and since ryan has waited very patiently for his turn that we will put chu gong as the lieutenant He's 38 years old, so he's actually three years older than the captain and nine years older than the general. But, you know, every dog has his day. Chu Gong arrives. Now, that is going to mean that this army has no missile units. Typically, if I have an army that doesn't have a strategist in it, two units in every retinue are archers. That's the way I usually do it. And since Chu Gong's got four spaces, I'm immediately going to give him two archers. And then I think we're going to retrain his G militia to become spear guard. Which should mean that we can then retrain Jung Jiang's spear guards to be archers. Nope, got to click on them first. So we've spent a lot of our money, like balance, but not much of the income. I want to take Song Chen with me. Um, I don't think we can afford to do that right now, given that it's going to cost money to raise Lu Jung back and still going to cost us more money to sort out the first army. But maybe Jung Jung isn't against that because she doesn't harmonize with Song Chen either. So perhaps in a year or two, Song Chen could be sent to help Lu Jung. But I don't think for this turn that it makes sense. So... We're going to do that. Uh, Chu Gong is here. We've got no money left. Right, let's end the turn. And see where we get. Dong Zhuo wants to form a coalition. He will pay us. No, we will pay him. Fuck you. Okie do. 
Sai Mao is actually in the recruitment pool now. Okay. Um, if we look at recruitment. What two units do you want in the rest of your retinue, Ryan? Because this is kind of more open to your interpretation, I guess. Because we needed to move the spear guards to give Jung Jung the archers. We needed to give you two archers. But beyond that, it's kind of personal choice. And also, David, you're going to have to sacrifice two of your units to become archer militia. Um, let me just check something. The archer militia would arrive at rank 3. So I don't know if you want to tell me which of these... To pick you've got four saber militia here and two axe bands here line infantry but you'll work with whatever we need well, the problem with line infantry for you is the only real line infantry we've got is the Sabre Militia, who are militia and crap. I don't really want to give you... Hidden Axes are not line militia because they don't have... the are line infantry because they don't have shields, so they're very vulnerable to archer fire. Um, we could give you two more spear guards, I guess. Or you could volunteer to take two more archers and have four archers in your retinue so that Song Chen doesn't have to change any of his troops. It's up to you. I, I kind of like state mandate that there needs to be six missile units in an army, but I really don't care which retinues they're in. It's just usually easier if a strategist is in the army that it's their retinue. And if they're not, that it's shared two to each other retinue. But if one of you guys, it's your characters, if you want to volunteer and take four, taking extra archers works for me. Cool. We'll go with that then. Right. That's going to need a few turns to sort of get itself pieced together. Meanwhile, Lu Zhong is going to be raised at Tai Yuan. Now, we still have 2,800 income, which I don't know if we could probably support a full second army, but it's maybe not the best idea. But I think at the very least we can support giving Zhong Zhang a captain of some description. What do you guys think? Do we give... Sorry, not Zhong Zhang, Lu Zhong. We could support giving Lu Zhong a captain. Sarah, your opinion's going to weigh most on this because it's your army and you're back in the capital, so all four of these other dudes are just sitting around in the capital. Do you want a captain? What does everybody else think? Your opinions still matter, but Sarah's has more weight because it's her army. My captain is with my sister. <laughs> oh my god. Give her what she needs to protect our homelands. Mm. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna... We're gonna take a couple of minutes here. I'm gonna sort of read out the whole sponsor and officer spiel again. Uh, you guys, every one of you that wants to, weigh in on who you think Lu Jung should have as her captain and you may include people that are in the first army because I think we've got enough money to move somebody from the first army and still recruit another replacement retinue so apart from Jung Jung because she can't move well because she's not gonna move uh, anybody else is on the table make your cases for who goes in what army Jung Jung's army is army one 
and Lu Jung's army is army two. Off you go, and I'm going to do the spiel. So for anybody watching or lurking, or anybody watching the VOD after the fact, uh, we are role-playing our Total War Three Kingdoms campaigns, and you may sponsor an officer, which is what the uh, people in the chat are currently doing, is using their sponsored officer positions to debate things. Um, and basically what that means is if you sponsor an officer, when they level up, you get to select which skills they acquire. Uh, you also get to try and guide them through the faction. So do you want them to be a civil officer? Do you want them to be a general? Are they a fierce warrior? You tell me what kind of character they are. You try and inform me on what you think their decisions would be. Um, and you can choose to roleplay it or just play it as if it's your only character. Like, you can roleplay by the traits that they have, which are like this. Or you can choose to just play it the way you want to play it. Uh, you get to decide whether they're military or civil, whether you want them to be a general, when you want them to retire, what their skills are going to be, and you get to have an input on faction decisions where I don't quite know what I want to do, and I ask for feedback, and that will be weighed up as well in terms of relationships. Uh, if you're thinking, I'd love to do that, Tom, but I don't know where this campaign has come from, I don't know what's happened in it, uh, all you need to do is do exclamation mark discord and join my discord if you're not already there and then check the hashtag campaign so far channel where I write a short couple paragraph summary of each episode and you can read that it probably take you for day one and two it take you like two three minutes once we've done day three probably take you about five minutes to read the whole thing but then you'll know pretty much where the campaign's at and you'll be able to join in should you want to. We will be playing Total War Three Kingdoms every Wednesday, with the exception of next Wednesday, the uh, 9th of October, um, at 7 to 8 p.m. GMT BST for two to three hours. And starting at some point in the near future, we'll also be playing on More War Mondays at the same time. Right, let's see what the chat's got going on here. Doomsday would say Yin Li or Ju Jun for the second army. Song Chen harmonizes and they have worked very well in the past few seasons in battle, so he would be one of the best to move to army two. Well, I don't know how Reigns feels about it OOC, but I know that Lu Jung formed a good relationship with Song Chen over the time they fought side by side, and she would trust nobody more than him as her captain. Plus, Song Chen does not harmonize with the general of the first army. I'm prepared to serve anyway, but the rice field. If it keeps them happy, Tsong Chen could be shifted. Promote a strategist and give them archers. Perhaps Shun Yu. Apparently Shun Yu wants to send Chu Gong back to the rice fields. Excellent. Chu <laughs> Shun Yu becoming a bit of an agent of anarchy. Right. There seems to be a fairly strong case being made for Tsong Chen to be moved with Are Liu Zhong and... I'm willing to listen to that case, which, <laughs> interestingly enough for Chu Gong, means he's immediately been made captain. And now we need to find someone to put into the second army, guys. So now we're looking at uh, Yin Li, Shun Yu, Ju Jun and Shu Rao, because everybody else kind of got positions already. Shun Yu is what Song Chen advises. Let's have a look at who harmonizes with these guys. Yin Li actually harmonizes with both of them. Shun Yu doesn't like Jung Zhang. Ju Jun harmonizes with Jung Zhang, but doesn't disharmonize with Chu Gong. And Shu Rao hates them both. So if you're going off pure harmony, Yin Li is the uh, the right choice. That's if you're going off of pure harmony, though. And you guys can go off whatever criteria you want. But she definitely needs a lieutenant, because she's still on the front line. Yin Li has served us well. He has. I don't want to be gutted in my sleep, thanks. <laughs>
I could make a convincing case for three of the four of them in my head. The only one that really doesn't fit is Shu Rao, because she's low level, she's young as a character, she doesn't harmonize with either of the people in the army, and she's got no military experience. So I think Shu Rao is out. But Yin Li harmonizes with both and has been a loyal servant. Shun Yu is an incredibly talented man, although he does not harmonize with Jung Zhang. Uh, and Ju Jun harmonizes with Jung Jung and doesn't disharmonize with Chu Gong. Plus, if we made him a general, maybe it'd be enough to get him some purpose and stop him bitching. Asking if Rill has anything to say, that's fair enough, Ryan. Rill, of course, for those of you who are unaware, is the person sponsoring Yin Li. So we'll give Yin Li or Rill a, f a few, maybe a minute to see if he comes back with anything. So far I've seen Lu Jung be an advocate of Yin Li moving and nobody else has really put an appeal. Oh no, uh, that's not true. Um, David has advised that Shun Yu gets put in. Rill says yay, okay. I'm thinking Yin Li uh, just because we need to make a decision. And that seems, uh, I mean, it's not the general consensus, but it works. Right, Ryan, since uh, Rill's not here, you can make a case for getting two of your units back if you want to push two, um, <laughs> two archer units to Yin Li. Excellent. So, uh, Song Chen and Shun Yu both support Yin Li moving, even though he doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> well, to be fair, David, if you guys are defending the capital, makes a lot of sense that you'd want him to join the army that's not there. He's my bitch. Give him two archers. Okay, so we're going to give him two archers, and then we're actually going to give him a couple of units of Gen Sword Guards. We'll have to finish that off in the next turn. And we'll give Chu Gong something different. Alright. I'm going to proceed. I know... So, the way we've just moved units around and redone units... Was it... Have we wasted money? Absolutely. Because we've changed units to archers and stuff that we're about to change to something else. Which is a waste of money. Was it more fun and role player? I think so, and I'd rather do it that way. Ma Tung wants to sign peace, but he wants us to pay, which is not going to happen. Ideally, if we can make that kind of decision before we spend the money, that would be better, but I'm quite happy to do it that way round anyway. Kong Rong has do joined Yuan Shao's war against us. The puppet Han Emperor captured by Kong Rong. The Emperor has been captured once again. Now they are a mere pawn in the larger conflict. As Prime Minister of the Emperor, you may annex Han Empire territory at a cost. That's, I think that's just in a general message. So Kong Rong has now vassalized the Han. Which means, given that Kong Rong just went to war with us, we're not at war with the Han because it happened afterwards, but uh, they are a vassal of somebody who's at war with us. Oh dear. Oh yeah, everybody's status is going to change with the Han, isn't it? So what's this? Ju Jun is being recalled from assignment. Song Chien is ready for duty. Yan Men has built something. So Kong Rong has taken the capital of Chang An from Dong Zhuo. Dong Zhuo's capital has changed, although I just closed the message that told us where to. And now the Emperor will have been relocated to Kong Rong's capital, which is probably over there. 
the thing that's going on in my head right now is that Shunyu is basically governing the lands from Taiyuan as everyone else is leading armies. It seems perfectly fair to me. He might now have some competition, given that Lu Zhong is garrisoned in Taiyuan. But yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that headcanon. Right, let's get this army sorted out. Uh, first of all, Jian Sword Guards for Yin Li. Second of all, Ryan, you need to pick two different units for your archers now. Our front line is actually significantly decreased because we've lost two melee units that were previously doing it. So Jung Zhang's recommendation is that you take probably Saber Militia, but she would accept Spear Guard because they have shields as well. So what she wants is shields in the front line, basically. But it's up to you, and if you want to make a case for a different unit, you may try and see if you can convince her. Replace the melee that we need. Okay. Let's get them in there then. Uh, swap and boff. Cool. Right, that's army one sorted out. I don't think we've got enough money at present. No, we need 2,700 to redeploy Song Chen. Chu Jun is still unhappy. However, he's lost his uh, negative, uh, his lack of purpose thing. So when he comes back from assignment, if we send him on assignment again, I think he'll be okay. He'll stay with us. But if we don't do that, he's definitely going to walk. Yan Men, um, you know what? We're going to roleplay this, guys. Uh, as much as we don't have an administrator for Yan Men right now, as Doomsday said, Shun Yu is pretty much running the, the land whilst everybody else is in the armies. So what we're going to say is, Shun Yu, Song Chen, and Lu Zhong, between the three of them, get to decide what gets built unless it's closer to Zhong Zhang. So, if we were building in An Ping, she's going to decide because she's standing there. But you guys are closer to Yan Mun than anybody else. So, you get to decide. So, we can upgrade its lumber yard, which is over there. Or we can utilize the second build slot in the town that we just got. Upgrading the lumber yard is. A uh, oh, plus 30 income boost to peasantry income. And nothing else really changes. And of course, using the build slot, we have... We've already got a state workshop. We could put a makeshift bandit shelter in, which reduces income, but improves replenishment. We could put government support in, which improves food production. Which Yan Men currently produces none, Yan Men rather. Uh, and it also increases it peasantry income by 10%, which Yan Men doesn't really make much. It makes 58, well, plus 40. So you'd be putting an extra, it'd be 40 plus 55%. I'm hoping you guys can see the numbers. Land development increases pop growth, generates one food, and 70 income to peasantry. An inn would increase income by 100 in commerce and add 10% income to commerce so it actually increases it by 110 it also unlocks a reform we got conscription which would lower population growth but increase starting rank for recruits in that province that commandery we've got a tribute hall which would increase 8% tribute diplomacy or tax collection, which reduces public order by 4, increases income in peasantry by 80, and unlocks a reform. Shun Yu, Lu Zhong, and Song Chen. Everybody else can still chip in, but 
I, again, I'm going to weigh the characters who actually have direct influence over the decision a lot more than I am the people that don't. So, by all means, if you guys want to have a debate in the comments... If it would be quicker for you guys to have the debate and you want to do it, you can jump into a Discord call with each other. I'm not going to join the Discord call unless you take ages. But uh, not call, you can jump into a channel in my Discord where everybody else can see. That way you don't have to call each other. But Maybe an in to start getting commerce income built up with bonuses from reforms. Okay, so Song Chen is thinking that we get an in. Or rather, the in chain, it would be a horse exchange. I'm going to give you a couple, well, maybe a minute. Shun Yu's saying an in or land development, so he's leaning towards uh, an in as well. Okay, honey, no problem. I think we're going to go with an inn then, since that seems to be the consensus. That's your guys' choice. You are now building things in our faction. And we're going to need to pick a reform. Uh, we've got Sino Roman Embassy, Agricultural Tax Relief. Pottery bricks reduces building upkeep by 25%. Um, where's the satisfaction for Vanguard's one? Oh, we already got it. Unlimited power. We've got coin minting reduces corruption, which we don't really have a problem with right now. I don't particularly think we need any of this stuff. Ten percent income from commerce and industry. Satisfaction for sentinels. Fifteen percent income from commerce. Twenty five percent building upkeep. Where does our money come from? We make a lot from industry in Tai Yuan. Most of Yanmen is industry. Peasantry in Zhongshan, and we make losses in Anping and Shi He. Hmm. Fryan wants a brothel. Well, you should have built a brothel while you were in the farm. Now you're in the army. We haven't got time to build a brothel. How much building upkeep are we paying? Can we see that? 80. So if we reduced 60 by 25%, that would be by 15. And 20 by 25% would be by 5. So we'd make 20 more copper. That's not really worth it. In that case, given that we don't actually make any income from commerce just yet, I think the best choice is 10% income from commerce and industry. Tax Taxation reform. Harmony is balance, and balance is equal taxation for every citizen. Which is exactly what David and uh, Doomsday both picked as well, around about the time that I was choosing to pick it. So, it's spring. We're going to drop a save. <laughs> Role playing the game, guys. Like, in we've been streaming for about an hour and a half, and we've managed to do a year. I don't have a problem with that pace, but it just goes to show how much slower the game is when, like, when we're role playing it this way. And that, and I'm fine with that, because it means that everybody knows what's going on. Nobody gets left too far behind if they miss a session. But we're really not, like, turboing through this. Right. 
Let's proceed. Proceed. Han Sui wants to give us 32 copper and we give him a clay ox and expert's leather for military access. I'm leaning towards no but a quick yes or no from anybody who wants an opinion. I'm not going to wait on this decision but it takes you a second to type yes or no. David saying no. I'm saying no. I think it's going to be a no. It's a no. Ryan's saying no as well. Right. Liu Bei signed a peace treaty with Liu Yao. Kong Rong declared war on the yellow turbans. Right. Where are we at with this? All the units are, well, the correct unit. And then we are still mustering, so we're going to wait. Over here, we need to recruit Song Chen. There we go, that's him added to the defense army. So we've got 36-year-old Lu Zhong and 35-year-old Song Chen. Just out of curiosity. Nope, that's not what I wanted. It costs 2,000 copper to choose a spouse from characters you already have. It costs 4,000 copper to auto-generate a spouse. Which makes sense, because essentially you're recruiting another general. I'm just looking at that because Lu Jung and Song Chen are of basically the same age, and they get along well, and there's something of a little romance blossoming, so... If it's what uh, they would like, I think that we could spare 2,000 copper and marry them. If that's what David and Sarah have been trying to allude towards, I don't know. Disloyal versus dutiful. As you are ready... What? Oh, as you are reading one evening, you come across a passage discussing loyalty. What is loyalty, it asks? Fealty to one's lord, or fealty to heaven? The mandate of heaven bears no allegiance to only one man, but to the best suited. Should we do the same? Hmm... We need a full second army first. I mean, I don't know. We could afford that anyway, to be honest, I think. We just need to let the actual treasury build up for a couple turns. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which one is which here. The mandate of heaven bears no allegiance to only one man. I feel like Jung Jang herself isn't very loyal to anyone, like certainly not to an overlord or a master, but that she probably would want her people to be loyal to her. David's saying dutiful. I actually think I'm going to ignore this, mostly because I'm not 100% on which one of these is actually the right, like which one corresponds to what. But also because I think Jung Jung herself feels two different ways. She personally isn't loyal to anyone, but she wants loyalty from her followers. So we're going to ignore it. 
These are interesting asides you considered, but nothing more. You continued to read. All right. Um, how are we looking with Army 1? Still replenishing. Uh, we also have build slots available in practically every settlement. For Tai Yuen, the option is actually to upgrade it. Oh, shit. We didn't put uh, Jujun on a new assignment. We have an assignment to dish out. So, given that the, si the assignments have to be given to people in court, and we've only got three, we're again going to let Shun Yu... Lu Jung, if Sarah's still about, and Song Chen have the biggest say, but everybody else chip in. Who's going on an assignment? Shu Rao, Shun Yu, or Ju Jun? We want Shun Yu to be happy, though. Oh yeah, you were talking about the last decision. It's not. It doesn't make him unhappy. It's more. Of, it affects his relationship with Jung Jang more than anything else. Shun Yu thinks we should send Ju Jun on a assignment. Chu Gong is saying sack the ungrateful bastard. Um, we need to decide who we're sending on an assignment, honey, out of Shun Yu, Ju Jun, and Shu Rao. And again, because of the characters that are in the capital, um, I'm going to let. Uh, Lu Jung, Song Chen, and Shun Yu have a bigger say. We also need to decide, because I think we can afford a lieutenant in the second army. So, consider both decisions at the same time, because it's the same three characters. If you send them on the assignment, they can't join the army. So, what we're looking for is an assignee and a lieutenant. Shun Yu for army, Ju 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 Jun for assignment, according to uh, Song Chen. Lu Jung thinks Shun Yu should go on the assignment. I'm assuming. I'm not sure what what Lu Jung's actually saying there. Shun Yu for assignment. Okay. <laughs> Shun Yu says, fuck. Jujun might be suited to an army as it would give him shit to do. I don't know if you have been overpowered, Doomsday. Of the three of you that are there, you all seem to want a different way round. You want Jujun on the assignment. Uh, Ch Song Chen also wants Ju Jun on the assignment and Shun Yu for the army and Lu Jung wants Shun Yu for the army and I'm guessing she wants Ju Jun for the arm uh, sorry she wants Shun Yu for the assignment and I'm guessing Ju Jun for the army but she could want Shu Rao yeah, it's not easy is it guys this faction leader stuff Jujun would a good addition for some Cav. Plus, as we get more money built up, we could promote him. I'd like to keep an eye on Jujun. Ah, it feels as though people are advocating for Jujun to join Lu Jung's army. Whoops. Which he does not harmonize with Song Chen, but he doesn't disharmonize with Lu Jung. I'm willing to put him in. It sounds like that's what you guys want. I think we should... Well, I, I'm not saying I think we should. I'm saying I'm about to put him in unless somebody gives me a reason that he shouldn't be going in. Because that's what everybody seems to want to do. Chu Gong is also seeming to voice that assent. I'll cuddle his horses with my sabers. Okay. Ju Jun is joining Lu Jung's army. And I actually think we should keep his retinue as only two units until his uh, satisfaction increases. 
because people with low satisfaction, if they're in an army, if they have a retinue, they take their retinue with them. They could rebel, so keeping his retinue small is probably not a bad idea. So now we've got Shun Yu and Shu Rao that can do assignments. They can both do two of the same. They can both do bandit patrols, which reduces enemy supplies in local commanderies. And they can both stimulate markets, which gives a 75% income to commerce, silk and spice increase. Shu Rao can also do counter espionage, which gives plus 10 cover cost for enemy spies. Basically means if there are spies in our faction, they have to spend 10 extra cover points to do stuff. So, who's going on the assignment? Which assignment are they going on? And where are we sending them to do it? Shun Yu is still saying Shu Rao for assignment. I'm not sure if we do have any commerce. Okay, Yan Mun makes some commerce money, but not a lot. And that's the only one. Stimulate markets with Shun Yu. <laughs> I think you've been outvoted, Shun Yu, by the heir of the faction and her, um, well, whatever you want to refer to him as. So, for that reason, Shun Yu is going to be not in Taiyuan, in Yanmen. Shun Yu is going to be sent from the capital to do, to stimulate the markets at Yanmen. Which now means he has a marginally less of a say in those capital decisions. Well, maybe you should have uh, found a way to secure some support if you liked using people as puppets. It seems to me like Lu Jung has taken your puppet off you and sent you to the Yanmen. <laughs> that is pretty fucking three kingdoms, I have to admit. Ju Jun is powerful and loyal to Shun Yu. We will take Ju Jun into the army and send Shun Yu on a mission to Yanmen. That will separate them. Hello, Liu Bei. Wants us to pay him for a non-aggression pact. I mean, again, I'm not going to waste a lot of time on this unless somebody does a dot dot dot. So yes or no. Wants us to pay him a total of one and a half thousand copper over two years for a non-aggression pact. Fuck off. Suck it. We're so diplomatically inclined in this faction. Okay, that's definitely going to be a no. Wow, Dong Zhuo and Yuan Shu formed a coalition. Oh, and then he left it. Okay, well... That's more or less finished. It's autumn now. Okay. Chung Zhang is going to advance to where she can see Ye and encamp. What's going on with his loyalty? It's not particularly changing. What I'm going to say, Sarah and David to some extent, is Jujun is currently in your army. So in true Three Kingdoms fashion, that makes him your responsibility. So if you want to promote him and we've got the money, tell me. If you would rather we didn't promote him, tell me. And, like, I don't mean right now, I mean just in general as we're going forward. If you think we should really promote him, let me know. Or, you know, if I start looking at it, say, no, no, we don't want to touch it. Uh, I guess I have power over Yanmen directly now. Arguably, I'm stronger than before. 
I mean, you are not wrong, Doomsday. You are the only official in Yanman, which somewhat makes you a uh, de facto administrator. And we have money to spend. So if we're looking at Yanmen, then it's really up to Shun Yu, I guess. We've got the Yanmen lumberyard uh, that we could upgrade. The horse exchange could be upgraded or the town itself. Uh, for Lu Jung and Song Chen, we've got Tai Yuan, which the town can be upgraded. And then we've also got Zhong Shan, which is more of a Jung Jiang Chu Gong sort of decision. So I don't know. I'm I'm gonna sort of keep mentioning it, but I'm not gonna necessarily delay on all of these. If you like Doomsday seems to be getting it, we got trade agreements, yes we do. We're we're using as many as we've got. So we've got a maximum of two. We're trading with Han Sui and Zhang Yang. Doomsday seems to be grasping the concept very quickly though. Wherever your officer is, you have a degree of control over that. If there's nobody else there, you pretty much have unlimited control within the amount of finance we've actually got. So what I'm going to do is, as much as this is very RP and very backwards, because... Okay, so there's nothing going to happen at Tai Yuan because Song Chen's saying no. Um, I'm going to say that uh, given it's the first place, okay, Doomsday saying upgrade the Yanman Lumberyard. Let's have a look at that. Mm. Mm. Right. Jung Jong's going to send orders to upgrade Jong Shan to a town. However, Shun Yu can also send instructions to upgrade the pine lumber yard to a pine woodcutter. So we'll do that as well, since that's what Shun Yu seems to want to do. And that is going to end the autumn turn for 202. <laughs> Yuan Shao wants to pay us 1500 copper for peace. Interesting. His rank is third strongest. Kong Shenzhen is ninth strongest. Kong Rong is fifth. Liu Bei is first. So we're probably around about fourth strongest, I think. Maybe sixth. Like we might be on the other side of Kong Rong and Yuan Shao. But Yuan Shao is clearly pretty. Uh, afraid of us. He's poor in food, rich in money. Oh, we are outside his capital. That might have something to do with it. Interesting. I don't think we want to take his money just yet because we've got nowhere else to expand. Shun Yu wants to kill the UN line. Chu Gong wants to punt him in the face. So much diplomacy going on. I love it. Okay. Coalition became a military alliance between Yuan Shao and Kong Rong, which includes Tao Ying as well. Okay. We've gained a trader ancillary. You know, given that we've only just gained it, and Shun Yu is literally doing stimulate markets. 
we're going to say that we didn't get the trader. Shun Yu has gained the trader as a follower. Which uh, unlocks him in an extra assignment and grants him some trade, grants us trade influence if he's prime minister, heir, or faction leader. Oh, you know what we didn't do? Uh, not that I think we can particularly, but no, we can't. Never mind. Imagine the tribute Yuan Shao could bring us when put under our rule. Check you guys out. Right. Clever, determined, stubborn, fiery, greedy, and one-eyed. Yeah, forget that she's only got one eye now. Sarah, I was just saying as well, by the way, that um, it costs 2,000 copper to get. Be quiet. It costs 2,000 copper to marry two officers you already have. It costs 4,000 to generate a new officer. But uh, if that's where you and David are aiming to take your relationship, that we can do that when we have 2,000 copper. I don't know if that's what you're trying to achieve with Lu Zhong and Song Chen, or whether it's something more platonic, but I think you were away when we said that. Right, how is he doing in terms of satisfaction? He's still pretty pissed off. So again, I'm I'm gonna sort of I'm gonna prompt people. So uh, Ju Jun still unsatisfied, but he comes under the sway of Lu Jung and Song Chen. Uh, tai Yuan can build things, but that also comes under the sway of Lu Jung and Song Chen. Uh, and last I checked, or last David said, he didn't think Tai Yuan needed upgrading. So I'm just going to proceed. But again, three dots means I will stop and wait until you tell me whatever you want to tell me. If that's like, we need to build something in Tai Yuan, or we need to promote Ju Jun. Like, you know, whatever. Um, but we are going to proceed. It's not what I was trying to achieve, but it would make sense. That, and I really want to continue the line. I mean, we've got three and a uh, three thousand seven hundred copper right now, but it's up to what David thinks. That's what he said. You, your characters are the same age, basically. Lu Jung is thirty-seven, Song Chen is thirty-six. Uh, you both harmonise. Let's have a look at the actual. Your oath sworn. You both respect decisiveness and accept impulsiveness. That's what the uh, relationship is built on. We're going to proceed to spring because nobody's given me three dots. Spicy's flopping in. Hey, Spicy, how are you doing? How's your Wednesday going? Faction succession, bleh, succession, Wang Kuang has been succeeded by Wang Lan Lan. Living in harmony. Like fireflies to the ever-tempting flame, the incompetent somehow gravitate towards each other. These two inept individuals find friendship in one another, somehow, and you can only hope this leads to their betterment and not the opposite. The relationship deepens between Shu Rao and Song Chen. Let's do a spring wedding. <laughs> it's spring now. If that's what you're asking, we can do it. The Han have relocated their capital. Ooh, Kong Rong has taken her dong to the south. That is interesting. ready for winter. Are you a winter person too, Spicy? I love winter. I'm going to miss winter when I'm down south because I don't think it snows half as much as it does up here. Although I am coming home for Christmas, so maybe it'll snow for Christmas. Right. Um, Jujun 
still at three satisfaction. Doesn't seem to be going down or up. Tai Yuen still has build options now, including the Iron Mine and the Toolmaker. Toolmaker there, Iron Mine there. Uh, she, her, we're just kind of leaving that on the edge of society. We have got Kong Rong to the south. Zhong Zhang is currently besieging Yuan Shao. Close victory. Continue. Army approaching Shi He. Um, actually, yes, there is, because that's Ma Tung's flag. And we are at war with Ma Tung. Xia Hao Yuan, along with Wen Hui and Pong Ji, are on the western bank of the Yellow River. Do eat. Right. Does that mean that we're getting a, a marriage, kids? I want to see both parties agree. Sarah just did, because she said do it. Gonna go to family tree. Lu Jung. Marry. Song Chen. Is that what we're doing, Lu Jung and Song Chen? Let's do it while we have time. Somebody's desperate. They've both said yes. Wedding is happening. Married. Lu Jung and Song Chen. Right, excellent. Well, that's that done. And hold up. Dear sister, in honor of your wedding, I have sent you the discourses of the states. As I know that you take governance with great consideration. And dear brother-in-law, in recognition of all you have done on the battlefield and your wedding to my sister, I am sending you this armor that I have had crafted, expert's leather. That's where the whole throwing rice at weddings tradition started, because fucking Chu Gong had nothing else to give. So you just hurled rice at people. Okay, cool. Uh, fine. <laughs> no gifts from me. Alright, we're going to pick a reform. Uh, but in response to Ryan saying send the home guard army. What I'm going to do... I think most of the time is we're gonna tr we're kind of gonna role play it right. That army, for Jung Jung to hear of that, the message needs to travel across here to get to her, and then if she wants to order the home guard to do anything, the message then needs to go back that way. Now, I'm not for one second gonna assign some kind of message limit where it like only can cross one commandery per season or some shit. But what I'm gonna say is because these guys are closer to that than she is they get a season where like it's up to them because the message would come to them before it comes to Jung Jung anyway
So if these guys want to do anything, they can do something. I will order them when I think that the news should reach them. Um, Taiyuan can still build things, although a little bit less now. The toolmaker's off the table, but the iron mine still isn't. Ju Jun still has low loyalty. We need to pick a new reform. Ten percent income from industry, that's kind of a no brainer. Financial obligation disables technologies. What what does it disable? Core V Labour. Where's that? I'm confused. Oh, it's there. Okay. So what's that one? Minus one construction time. Or you can have 10% income from industry. Oh, okay. I didn't even realise there were options on here that, like, cancelled each other out. I feel like... I feel like for us the finance is more important. So we're going to get financial obligation. Your service may not necessarily be required. Your coin, however. So the army you would be up against is, first of all, it's in Dong Zhuo's land and it's a Ma Tung army. So I don't think they're able to replenish. No, they are not. They are weakened. They have two strategists. Three, six, eight archer units. Five G militia with no shields. Some raider cav that also have no shields. They're not a particularly strong army hunt. Um, certainly not in the position they're currently in. We might want to promote Jujun again as much as I don't want to say that. Well, that's really down to... Lu Jung, since you are suggesting it, but you're her subordinate, although you are also her husband now. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Do you guys think we should? Well, do you two particular, but everybody can chip in? It would cost us 2,000 copper to promote him to a general commander. These are just title ranks, though. It's really not. He isn't the general. Like, if you read the novel, people got titles that were fucking ridiculous, like General of the Flying Chariots of the West. Like, what does that even mean? I don't think it physically means he's the general of a bunch of chariots in the West that can fly, but that's the way it works. There's General of Flying Ca Cavalries in the list as well. Shun Yu doesn't support a promotion, but uh, Ju Jun is Lu Jung's lieutenant. Do we have the money for another promotion for Mr. Never Enough? It would be half of what we've currently got, but we would make it back plus 400 in the next turn. Because it's 2,000 to promote him. We've got 4,000 right now, and we earn 2,400 a turn. We need to keep things stable. Ju Jun promoted to General Commander. His satisfaction's up to 18 for now. And what do you want to do, Lu Jung? Are you staying in Tai Yuan? Are you running away? Are you advancing towards Shi He? Or are you doing something else? Whilst you're thinking about that, I'm going to have a review of my current situation. Wang 
We definitely want to start advancing towards she, her. Okay. I'm gonna advance you at normal march pace. If you... Oh, sorry, at normal pace. If you want to march, you need to tell me that you want to march. Which does get you a bit more movement. But it's up to you guys. I know you can't pick like the exact spots that you mar that you move to, but like if you are a general, which Sarah is our first other than me, I need to know like what kind of stance you're expecting to go into, roughly where you want to go on the map. So if you would like, I want to be across the river, or I want to be on our side of the river, or I want to hold at the mouth of the pass, or whatever. He can't reach us. No, because he's he's got the river between him anyway. It's going to take him almost a whole turn's worth of moves to cross the river. If not, then march. Okay. You also, don't forget that this pass in, he in front of you takes a lot of movement to get through. Uh, right, that's spring of 203. Looking like we've done everything we can do. You can go away. And then we want to overwrite that. Cool. Right. Proceed. <laughs> Ma Tung is willing to sign peace with us and he will pay us 745 copper. Where are we at? Are we going to have troubles with Wang Lan Lan when moving through the pass? No, it's our territory. Her territory is north of the pass. Lu Jung is saying sure on peace with Ma Tung. Shun Yu saying take it. Chu Gong wouldn't grind his rice with 745 copper. However, Song Chen is also saying take it. So we have the general and the captain that are going to face him, plus the um, civil officer who's close to the capital, all saying yes. So we're going to go with those people. They are the ones that are representing us closest to him, so it makes most sense. We should focus on Yuan Shao. Alright. Um, Jujun's satisfaction's dropped by 1 to 17. He still has a very high desire for a higher court position. Do you have that as well? No. That's interesting. Um, tai Yuen can upgrade the town, the iron mine, or the tool maker. Yan Men can upgrade the town, the horse exchange, or the pine woodcutter. We're still ignoring she, her. We're going to continue besieging that. Wang Lan Lan has she, her small town. Hmm. Perhaps we should convince him to let go of it. Her, but yeah. I mean, the him, the home defense force could attack Kong Rong now. They move towards him. What concoction are you two spouses coming up with? your army tell me what you want to do with it
I support any measure that would strengthen the nation's direct control over land. We're going to make a move against Sheher City, okay? I'm assuming, since we're not at war, that you are just going to force march through this pass and then sort it out next turn. So you're through the pass, just on our side of the border. And that's the end of summer 203. Again, guys, if you particularly, you know, not just Sarah and David, but everybody, if there's buildings that you want built, especially if they're within your character's sphere of influence, let me know if you want to do it on a specific turn, but you're worried that I'll be finished with the turn beforehand. Three dots and I'll wait for you. Dong Zhuo will sign a non-aggression pact and pay us 52 copper. Right now, all we have is the fishing port to the west, so I think taking the town would give us more to work with, not to mention more sight to the northwest. More land for me to govern once this stupid assignment is over. <laughs> Sling it, fatty. I don't think Chu Gong's a big fan of Dong Zhuo's proposal. I can't say I am either. And I don't trust him to honour it anyway, so... Sarah saying no as well. Kiss the lieutenant's ass, David. Why are you making him kiss Jujun's ass? Okay. There are people available to be recruited. No. Upgrade Yanmen Town. That's definitely doable. You are pretty much in control of Yanmen Town. So, there you go. It's being upgraded. Chop down the reforms tree. Good lumber, that. For fuck's sake. Uh, I think Jung Zhang is going to order the construction of a tributary shrine at uh, Zhongshan since it's next to Gongsun Zan's land so it's not as far for them to walk when they bring it to us. Right. Lu Zhong. Currently sitting on the border with Wang Lan Lan. She has a very small army in there, and it's a small town, so it has no retinue. So there's literally four units and two officers in that town. Joe, how are you doing, buddy? Welcome to the stream. How's your Wednesday? Song Chen seems to p think that it's easy pickings for sure. Let's take it. Okay, um, that means we're going to have to declare war on Wang Lan Lan. She's trading with Zhang Yang, same as us, but she doesn't have any allies. Although we have a previously signed non-aggression pact that y'all didn't consider. So 
What are we? Are you formally cancelling that, or are you just going to break it? Song Chen is voting for formally cancelling it. Which will come with a waiting period, David, just so you understand. I think it's a year that you have to wait before it counts as betraying them. How long between formally cancelling and being able to strike? It's either five or six turns. Uh, I think the way that it works is the, the agreement gives five turns of notice. But if you attack them on the last one, you still get a pop-up saying you will be considered breaking a treaty. And then the turn after, you can usually attack. So it's about five or six. Chu Gong does not condone such dishonorable actions, but Shun Yu is all for it too, as long as we're formally breaking it. formally cancel it and set up camp on our side of the border okay this is some three kingdoms level posturing going on right here so Lu Zhong has set up camp just south of Shi He town and hang on Chu Rao is basically going to take the initiative and choose to upgrade Tai Yuan to a small city. Uh, I don't know if it's that. I'm not even bothering to work out whether it's a good move because she's incompetent. So basically, everybody else has left her to it and she's decided that she wants to look important too. That's going to be the end of that turn, I think. Han Sui wants to arrange marriage between Han Chong and Jung Zhang. You can fuck right off. That's not happening. Attacker reinforcements. Where's this at? At uh, year. The siege progresses, but our assaulting forces grow weary and supplies run low. A nearby village, loyal and abundant in resources, could possibly aid us. Shall we call on them to help? Yeah, why not? It makes sense that Zhong Zhang would call the people to arms against their former masters. Even though year losing 10% pop is not great, but still... We must take whatever aid we can get in these difficult times. So Jujun is now at 15 satisfaction, so that's definitely still on its way down. Uh, Zhongshan can build something again. we're going to do is upgrade Zhongshan by Jung Zhang's request to a large town. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, they're both going to large towns anyway, which doesn't cost food. Hell nah? What are you hell nahing at? Jesus Christ, what more does he want? <laughs> Liu Bei is offering military access as long as we pay him a ridiculous amount of stuff. Jung Jung's greedy, so we're just going to refuse. 
Also, he's closest to her. Gongsun Zan has declared war on us. Ooh. Hell knowing that. Oh, the marriage from Han Sui. Do we have any bribes to give him? What, Leo B? Sorry. I, I couldn't be bothered with his stupid non aggression pact. So now we're at war with Gongsun Zan again, our tributary. Seen a bit spicy, thanks for stopping by, mate. And our income has just taken a big hit because we were relying on the tributary. Alright, Zhong Zhang is running pretty low on military supplies, so we are going to... We're going to delegate this because it's a pretty... Like, we're still... We're going to take these medium casualties, but it's not really worth fighting it to kill one retinue worth of people. Yikes. Okay. And we are going to loot and occupy this for a reason. Mission issued. New order. The time for a new order has come. As empires and dynasties crumble, you forge your plans of conquest and subjugation. Go forth to seize your fortune and your rightful place. Your notoriety increases, outlaw. Word of your deeds have started to spread. You are rising in power and a trail of destruction is in your wake. You are called Vagabond. You never settle and your unpredictability and fury are feared. Yet they do not know the depths of your rage. Show them! Excellent! A treasure! As you proceed through the annexed settlement, one of your officers brings an ornate chest before you, sealed with a heavy lock. You strike it firmly with your blade, breaking the chest open to reveal its contents. Jewels, valuable trinkets, and wondrous treasures. More money! Shush! What did I just say? Okay, that can go. We've occupied that. Seen that, seen that, seen that. Yin Li has gained a rank. It's a shame Rill's not around to pick his skill. Alright, hold up. Do we have any bribes to give to Ju Jun? Oh, a satisfaction item. Um, probably. Yeah, you can give him a wooden ox, uh, an iron snake, a clay ox, or a jade monkey. We need food now. Yes, we do. We won't need that for very long. While you think about what you want to bribe him with, I am going to do what I was going to do. Hello, you in Shao. How would you like a peace treaty? You'd be particularly fond of that idea. I wonder why. Didn't think so, but that's not what I was looking for. In fact, wait a minute. He'd go for it anyway. I was going to give him his capital back to convince him, but I just realised we don't need to. Let's demand some money from him. He's got 16k. Alright, well, we'll demand three and a half thousand copper from him for peace. Which allows us to uh, focus on Gongsun Zan then. Right. 
Right. Give him the monkey, it suits him. Okay. Let's give him the monkey. Wisdom is knowledge of men's true value. His satisfaction's up to 22. What are his choices, Ryan? Uh, he has three options. Bravery, scholarship, or stability. I can read you what they do if you want. I don't know how much of it real will un understand. Or you can just give him the words and see which one he picks. Uh, right. Ba, 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 ba. Right, hold on. We just leveled up to Outlaw from Bandit. Which means... We now have an extra assignment spot. An extra spy position, which we're not using yet anyway. An extra trade agreement. And an extra administrator spot. So let's maybe have a look and see if anybody wants to trade with us. The Han would consider it. But they are our enemy's vassal. Can we fill in Jujun's retinue? Yeah, probably. Okay, apparently that's a good thing for them, not us. Extra trade is awesome, Doomsday, especially in the situation we're in right now. But I don't. We're gonna have to give up something to the Han in order to convince them, and I don't think we want to do that. And they're the only ones that we can even try and trade with. However, more importantly, we've now unlocked the Chancellor position on the Council and an Administrator slot. So the Chancellor is the Chief Civil Officer, the first of your appointed ministers and second only to you in the Council hierarchy. There is a comp... well, it's not tied to anything on the map. You can be the Chancellor and still be in an army. It's basically a civil position. And then the administrator is a position which is essentially like a commandery governor. So say, for example, we made someone the administrator of Tai Yuen. If that person's in an army, they're still the administrator. And some of their traits will boost the commandery that they're the administrator of. But if they're not in an army, their retinue actually gets added to the garrison of the, ci the city or town from that commandery. So, we need to pick some of those. Have you forgotten all we stand for, sister? I mean, no, not really. But we, uh, yeah. I mean, I would like to hear thoughts on who the Chancellor should be and who would be a good administrator and which commandery they might end up administrating. It, I'm interested to see what everybody thinks. But I think I'll probably make the choices based on Jung Jung. All that we stand against. Shun Yu would gladly take chancellorship. What a shock. I 
think the one issue is uh, the only person that we couldn't really assign to either position would be Lu Jung without making her no longer the heir. She's currently the faction heir, which counts as a position in court. Like, these are the court positions, and she already has one. So we would have to make her no longer the heir in order to change her to one of the other two. But everybody else... Lu Jung will recommend Song Chen. What, for chancellorship or for administrator? Clever, determined, stubborn, fiery, greedy, and one-eyed. Let's uh, take a look at Okay, no What if I wanted to Sort Okay Hold up Yes Like that Okay, so Let's flip it the other way. Organized by that. Oh shit. There we go. So this is our officers in descending age order. So the oldest is Yin Li. The second two oldest are Shun Yu and Chu Gong. Then Lu Jung, Song Chen, Chu Jun, Chung Zhang, and Shu Rao. Chu Gong has made decisions that have supported our cause in the past. I would recommend him for administrator. Whilst I don't like him, I think Song Chen is the most qualified and appropriate for such a position. Interesting, interesting. Well... Where are we at here? Tong Chen doesn't even seem to be on here anymore. Hmm. <laughs> okay. The chief civil officer. I think whoever gets appointed to com uh, to chancellor, if it's a person who's already who's sponsoring an officer, um, they are largely going to be making any decision like any generalized decision so if we've got like buildings available in towns where nobody really has right to claim influence i think that's going to fall to the chancellor i think the chancellor is going to get a bigger say in who the administrators are and stuff potentially not the other the other council positions but certainly administrator positions real said stability okay let me do that now Plus 8 authority, unlocks counteract corruption assignment, and gives plus 5 public order to administer the commandery. I'd argue Shun Yu is best qualified with his civil management experiences. Shun Yu really going for it. Really pushing, pushing forth on the whole being in charge stuff.
Wow, Jung Jung really doesn't harmonize with very many people. I thought her and Song Chen were old swan. I guess at some point they stopped being old swan if they were. Because neither of them have the other person on <laughs> on their uh, their list. What if we went to characters? Song Chen. Yeah, his relationship with Jung Jung pretty much just seems to go through Lu Jung now. I would vouch against Shun Yu for chancellorship. He was just another Han pawn before we forced him to see the light of our new dawn. I'm afraid he is only in it for himself. Interesting. Right, I uh, I think I've made a decision, at least on the Chancellor. Is Ju Jun still pissed off? I mean, he's still alive, so probably. Uh, his satisfaction is at 22 and staying there, but I can't remember what turn we gave him the monkey on. Let's proceed, though. Brother-in-law, I write to you today to inform you that I am appointing you Chancellor. It will be your duty to see to civil matters in my stead should I not be able to make the decisions. I trust that with my sister's guidance you will do well in this position. So it grants 15% extra income from peasantry, which is just from the position. Uh, Tsong Chen won't desire another office until rank 8. Uh, if he defects, it could trigger a civil war, and he's part of the faction council. He also gets paid a higher wage. I will server... <laughs> I will serve my position to the best of my ability. Excellent. Well, your first job, Song Chen, will be recommending people for administrator and what commandery those people would be admi administrator of. Now, I will say that when I run, when I play this game, I typically prefer the administrators of commanderies not to be out in the field. That's not the case every single time. I don't, in some cases, I appoint someone and then they raise a, an army as as a, um, an administrator and then march out of their commandery. In some cases, I appoint somebody the administrator of a commandery because it's under threat and they're already in an army. And it's kind of like they need to stay in the army to defend their commandery. But typically, I like to have the administrator as somebody who's chilling in court because then that adds their retinue to the defense. It's basically maximizing use of troops. But it's completely up to you guys, and especially up to Chancellor Song Chien. It can be anyone except somebody who's already got a council position. So can't be Jung Jung, can't be Lu Jung, and can't be Song Chien, but could be any of the rest of them. Doop -a doo I'd like to assign them this turn if possible, so I'm going to take a look at some other stuff. Uh, year is damaged. Shun Yu has been doing a good deal of work in Yanmen and it hasn't fallen apart. I would recommend Shun Yu for administrator of Yanmen. I reject the official position of administrator. Wow! What is going on? Hmm. Interesting. What other candidates do we have? Dear Shun Yu, your objection 
and rejection of the position of administrator for Yan Mun is duly noted. However, there are few people of talent in this court and the options are limited. For this reason, I would like you to continue your stay in Yan Mun as administrator. So we're going to go here. We're going to say point administrator. Oh, we can't assign him whilst he's on an assignment. So he has officially been told he's the administrator, but we'll wait until he comes back from his assignment. I'll do the job if he's too spineless. You're such a Jong Fei, Ryan. So. Cool. Right, uh, let's see if we can't repair what's going on in your... Fuck, that cost a lot. Given how much we are losing at present. Right, what have we got? That provides... that provides that. That provides something quite useful. So does that. Right, we're going to spend 2,000 copper repairing those two buildings. And we're going to let the rest auto-repair, which takes time, but is uh, possible. We're going to invoke the Faction Council. This really isn't a roleplay mechanic. You click the button and everybody on the council gives you a quote-unquote mission, where once you've done it, you get a boost and that person's satisfaction goes up, but you can't control what they pick. And to be honest, most of the time I don't even aim for what they've picked. So Song Chen's um, mission for the for the faction is to construct a building from the settlement administration chain. So make one of the towns bigger, basically. When it happens, it happens. We've also unlocked our first spy slot. Which we only have two people that could possibly use the spy slot, Jujun and Shu Rao. I mean, it could be worth dispatching Shu Rao somewhere just to see what she finds. If Shun Yu rejects his responsibility to the people, then I recommend Chu Gong for his proven worth, feeding our armies and our people. Uh, I want Chu Gong in the army though. <laughs> Right. I'm not going to utilize that spy slot immediately. I'm not too worried about it, but it may be worth doing. Okay, that's going to be the end of Winter of 203. No diplomacy this uh, season. Very little going on. Um, Shun Yu appears to have leveled up. So, Doomsday. Shun Yu is a 40-year-old uh, strategist level 3. He's a legendary character with a Hegemon's Aid background. He is dutiful, tranquil, understanding, bright, brilliant, and distinguished. And you have four options. Patience, Precision, intuition or abundance he can't have abundance that's my fucking rice oh, we'll see Typically, I don't like to hover too long over the traits, just because for me personally, I like people to RP the choice. But if there is anyone you want to look at to see what it actually does mechanically, that's perfectly fine. Intuition causes cause fire. Uh, no, it does not.
intuition are you saying cause fire or cause fire either way I'm not sure I understand are you picking intuition I'm confused I'll come back to it what else have we got yeah what the fuck you have no knowledge of this building and cannot develop it further if possible you can convert it into something more suitable or demolish it entirely oh it's a secretariat of UN so we've uh, we've got one of UN Shao's unique buildings which actually does quite a lot of that's pretty decent building to be honest so I'm gonna keep that fuck it intuition anyway sounds pretty intuitive excellent right um, we are gonna start marching north but I'm not gonna march march because we've got recovering to do so As for Wang Lan Lan, if we were to... Oh, I don't want a quick deal. If we were to declare war... The thing with, uh, with declaring war is if you... If there's any kind of... You will be considered untrustworthy, it will pop up. If there's not, it just lets you click the button and you're at war. So... Basically, the way that it has to be is you need to tell me if you want to test whether or not it's been long enough, basically. Because there's, it's, if the test is positive, we're at war. So, Sarah and David, to some extent, if you guys want to go to war with Wang Lan Lan, I will try and see what it says about rep. Uh, outside of that, Jujun's satisfaction has dropped by one again. He's at 21 now. Building wise, I don't think there's too much to do. We've got reforms. Oh, hello. We could actually get uh, an, a, a second administrator position. I'm going to try and get some rest. Lu Jung trusts her husband and will defer to his judgment. All right, honey, no problem. We're probably only going to be streaming for another 15 minutes or so, guys, anyway. Have a good sleep, honey. David, you need to tell me what uh, is going on with, Jung, uh, with Lu Jung's army for the next 15 minutes. I don't think we really need a second administrator position right now. We're going to get horse magnates, I think. 20% extra trade influence and 4k pop growth in all counties. He who controls the horses controls China. No war yet, focus on stabilizing the economy again. Okay. If I'm the administrator of Yan Men, could I recommend military action versus Gong Sun before he invades? You can absolutely recommend whatever you want. As the administrator of Yan Men, you are responsible for all building choices there. Unless, you know, you raise an army and wander off and somebody gets sneaks in there on an assignment or something like you've done. But typically, that that commander is your responsibility. You can choose the buildings. You can choose to exempt it from tax if you want. Um, 
you can even raise an army there if you want to. And if we have an army slot, which I think we do. Yeah, we do. But we don't have a shitload of money right now. As a as an administrator, you've got limited power, but you've got very like localized power. It's very much up to you. Uh right. I think that's the end of Spring 204. So we're going to try and get to Spring 205 um, before the end of the stream, guys, I think. Because I like finishing it in the spring. So, game is saved. Proceeding on. Yuan Shao wants a non-aggression pact for a clay ox. I think it's a very small price to pay. I don't know how much he will abide by it, but uh, still. We'll do it. We are losing money. We must support our economy through raiding. We cannot simply sit back and stabilize the economy without any money to do it with. It's a valid point. I don't know if you can quite shout that across China, but... <laughs> The Han has been commanded to join the war against us by Kong Rong. And Wang Lan Lan just joined a coalition with Zhang Yang, who we are trading with. And we've completed um, Song Chen's assignment. So Song Chen gets some satisfaction. We get five turns of 10% extra income from industry and plus five satisfaction for Sentinels. Artful versus honourable. Your peaceful meditation is disturbed by an angry discussion between two of your retainers happening nearby. You listen to the argument. As a bastion of honour, I cannot allow this to stand. You have taken countless bribes for army rations, says the first. If you want, I can involve you, argues the second. How does half sound? They are unaware you are listening. So Chu Gong and Yin Li going at each other because apparently Yin Li is taking bribes. You did get told to fuck off about this last time and you're getting told to fuck off about it again. This man is industrious, if not insalubrious. You commended him for this effort, but with a stern warning. <gasps> Dai Shu Tzu! Who did you just serve? He's been serving the Han until 204. And now he's on the market. Taisha, sir! Oh, God. I want him. Defiant, honourable, intimidating, and one eyed. I refuse to trust a man that would steal from those you expect to die for you. I really want to recruit Taisha Sir, guys. I know that we're currently in debt and we're losing 365 copper per turn. But we have eight and a half thousand and he only costs one. It's Taisha Sir, David! We've also got to pay his wages. I mean, yeah, but it's Tai Shirt, sir. Uh, want him. I'm not worried about the financial situation, guys, just so you're aware. We're going to be attacking Gong Sun Zan soon enough and he's going to fall over like a domino and we're going to take loads of money off him. But he's a level 4 and he's going to be just as much of an ass as Ju Jun with the promotion bullshit. Wrong. Why is Ju Jun such an ass with the promotion bullshit? 
because he is greedy. Increased penalty from desire for higher office. Tai Shutsu, fuck off, Ju Jun, is not greedy. He is defiant. He's honourable, which actually gives him a reduced penalty from desire for higher office. Intimidating and one-eyed. So, no, we wouldn't have as many problems with him as we do with Jujun. Because he's fucking Taishan, sir. Grr, fine. Yes! That's one one fine is enough. We're getting Taishan, sir. Sarah's going to flip her shit when she finds out, but she went to bed, so fuck it. Oh my god, we got Taishan, sir. Yay! Okie do. Uh, Jujun's satisfaction has dropped to 20. Jung Jang's army is going to continue marching north. Yan Men can actually upgrade stuff if Doomsday is still about. Oh, we also have an extra assignment, guys. So we could send either Shu Rao or Tai Shutsu on an assignment. Oh, mate, I love getting the like the my favorite characters from the the novel, especially in factions where I don't expect to get them. Like it's awesome when you play as Tao Tao and you've got Xiao Duen and stuff. But he starts with him. I know I get him. But like if I'm playing as Jung Jung. Like, and you get Tai Shutsu or Huang Gai or Gan Ning, like, just characters that shouldn't be in your court, but they are. It's fucking awesome. Even Shun Yu, I liked getting Shun Yu, because he's, like, a big deal in the beginning of the novel. Upgrade the inn building. Okie doke. Upgrade the horse exchange to a mail post. And again, we have got an extra assignment kicking about, guys. And two people who aren't on one. If we wanted to send Tai Shutsu on one, he can do supervised construction, which lowers construction cost, time, and building upkeep in the commander he's in. Bandit patrols, which I think everybody can do in this faction. And counteract corruption, which lowers corruption in the commandery. I don't think we've got any corruption problems, but... Check Discord when you can. Oh no, am I in trouble for recruiting Tai Shutsu? Sir? Um right. I'm not seeing anybody saying anything about assignments, so we're just going to push on. Kong Rong has an army heading up the Yellow River towards Shi He. Wang, Wang, Wang Lan Lan is also getting quite a few people into a coalition as well. Gao Gan and Zhang Yang and Wang Lan Lan. So all of the small guys around us are in a coalition now. I wonder why. David is back. David, uh, Kong Rong has an army sailing up the Yellow River, which I believe he is in charge of. Yep, he is. Kong Rong, Xiao Wen Yan, and Tsai Xun are on their way. 
They have a shit ton of ranged, but not many much in the way of melee troops. And also, um, Wang Lan Lan is now in a coalition with both Zhang Yang and Gao Gan. So yeah, there is that. You know what? We are going to upgrade that to irrigated farms because it gets us a bit more food and we need food. We need to beef up Jujun soon and move down to the fishing port to meet him. I mean... You can start trying to beef up Jujun if you want. But we've got 2,700 copper. Probably not a bad shout, Doomsday. It's more or less what the plan seems to be. Shaving office. Hmm. Let me just have a look. David, Tai Shut Sir is going to write to Tsong Chen and request that we build a uh, land surveying office in Tai Yuan. But as the Chancellor, and the fact that you're closer to Tai Yuan than Zhong Zhang is, you get to decide. Do it. Okay. We have 1300 copper. We've got like four turns worth of money right now. Here he comes. Ma Tung wants to marry Pong Ji to Zhong Zhang. No. Dong Zhuo just called Wang Lan Lan into a war against Kong Rong. That's interesting. We are, however, reaching the end of the stream. Shun Yu is depressed that he gets completely ignored in civil matters, even though he's the only one that's taken direct part in civil matters. He keeps being overruled by people that are in higher positions than him, though. That's the way the game is played. Uh, it looks like Kong Rong got rid of one of his retinues. So, David, if there's something you want to do here, let me know what it is. Oh, shit. Hello. Kong Sun Shu. With Wang Lei and Wei Juan Meng. Seven archer units. Six G militia. Two cav. Three saber militia. Do we know how strong you are? No, we don't. Okay, how far can you move? Okay. So we are going to withdraw back to there.
Does he have cav? He has one unit of melee cav mounted saber militia and one unit of shock cav mounted lancer militia. If he wasn't losing money, Shun Yu would raise up his retinue into an army and request trebuchet and siege die himself. Well, if we weren't losing money, you could do that, but we can't afford to do that. He only has three units with shields. I think we have a decent shot at winning. I do too. Also, battles on the o on the river have to be delegated. There are no f like river fights. <laughs> If we took you into normal stance, I'm not sure you could actually get at him this turn. It looks to me like your movement would end there. Or anywhere along the coast or the riverbank. Let's go to the bank and see what he does. Okay. Like, level with him, or north of him, or south of him, where? Just north of him. So, round about there then. That's just north. Alright. Lu Jung is in position. Jung Jung is poised to strike at Gongsun Zan. But Gongsun Shu is leading an army in the way. We are in financial difficulties. I think right this second, the next few turns will be okay. I mean, we've got two turns worth of um, debt before we start to actually lose like enter bankruptcy we're also losing food though so when we return this campaign is poised on a little bit of a knife edge it is very much going to depend on how well our two armies do our eastern army and our western army but there is indeed now two fronts going for Jung Jung. The east against Gongsun Zan, which do not be deceived. He owns most of the stuff behind here as well. So it's going to be a long campaign. And then we've got Kong Rong, who again, don't be deceived. He has these two settlements, but he's also got land over this direction as well, down the river. So we have two enemies that need to be defeated. However, I'm going to end the stream here. We didn't quite make it to spring, but we've been streaming for three hours and five minutes, which is, I think this is a, as much as it's not spring, it's a good cliffhanger. And if we proceeded any further, we'd probably have to fight two battles, which is going to extend the stream time by like an hour. And I don't want to do that. So we're going to end the stream here i'm gonna do a save right now so that we don't forget to do it that's not the button i wanted to press that is so i will be streaming something tomorrow at the same time it will not be three kingdoms but if you want to come along for that feel free it might well be xcom 2 it might be a bit more planet zoo not really sure but we'll see i'll be doing something um chances are i'm not going to be streaming this weekend and then there'll be a big like week plus gap uh before the next stream what i'm gonna do 
therefore is I can't announce when the next Three Kingdoms stream is going to be. Um, I might know by tomorrow's stream, but I might not. What I can say is it will not be next week. So there will be at least a week's gap between the next Three Kingdoms stream. I'm hoping that I can do it um, on Monday the 14th, would it be? I'm hoping I can do one on Monday the 14th and then Wednesday um, the 16th, but I'm not sure. I will let you know in the Discord, guys. So if you're not in the Discord, exclamation mark Discord will get you an invite so that you can keep track of when we come back to Jung Jung day four. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. This is seriously like this is the way I always wanted to do 3K on stream. I wanted to do it with people like contributing and like scuppering each other's plans. Doomsday, I'm really sorry that so far Shun Yu's been shit on by everybody else, but maybe they've detected that he's a little bit ambitious and they're a bit wary of that. I don't know. Um, David and Sarah have now got hold of an army between them and uh, pretty much most of the civil administration as well. So, you know, it's now reaching that kind of that mid game where I really wanted to get to where me being the faction leader doesn't necessarily mean everything goes the way I want it to go. Because, you know, if enough people in the right positions make decisions, I don't get an input and I don't want one. I want it to feel like if you carve out a small piece of our territory for yourself you govern it but it's just as susceptible for somebody else to sneak in and start usurping your authority as shun Yu has managed to usurp mine um <laughs> yeah we have made some really good progress today david and it's been a massive amount of fun thank you guys so much ryan has finally got out of the rice fields and killed some people exactly don't worry, Doomsday, I had the same treatment. I mean, nobody was wary of you, Ryan. We just didn't, we couldn't afford to put you out in a field. But we are definitely getting to that really interesting piece where people are going to start to have a lot more influence and a lot more freedom to raise their own armies or command their own armies and go out and direct the faction, like conquer things for the faction, run things for the faction. Like, it's not all going to be me. Once we get to this kind of size... We're starting to get to the point where I don't want the faction leader to control absolutely everything. I want you guys to control things as well. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'm going to just have a quick check, see if there's anywhere I can do a raid. Which it doesn't really look like there is. Um, I'm probably not going to do one. Uh... So please stay tuned to the Discord for when the next Three Kingdoms stream will be, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really, really do appreciate it. For the time being, though, it's going to be Wardog out.